So there's a funny story. And the story was about how the Oregon Things Look Different Here campaign was first born. I think we had just signed a contract with Wyden and Kennedy. And because it's new work, because it's a new relationship with an agency, because there's a new state tourism director, because there was some additional money that was added, so there were a lot of eyes on this campaign, the governor was brought in. They met with Goldschmidt, and it was uh, like Christmas Eve or some crazy time, and the weather was really bad, and they presented a bunch of lines to him. Guess he wasn't in a great mood. The governor was needing to get off to another occasion, so he was a little snippy about things. And it's just not going well. All these ideas are being thrown out there, and uh, uh, he's just not being receptive to anything. And then Dan says, hold on, hold on. So he leans in and he goes, Governor, all the stuff we've been showing you, it's just for show. It's not the real work. Here's the real concept. Oregon, shaped like Wyoming, but comes with a beach. <laughs> care if you've lived in Oregon for five minutes or if you're eighth generation. Um, you're an Oregonian and you're here for a reason and that's to really value place. One of the things I love working on the brand is that it has a uh, real impact on Oregonians. I think the, the impact on the state is, is amazing. Um, there's certainly, you know, you could put a dollar number to it, um, which there's some research that shows that for every dollar we spend there's like 14 or 15 dollars back. It was the first state to protect every inch of its coastline. The first state to stop litter with a bottle bill. The first state to clean up the air by banning fluorocarbons. The first state where it's the people that are spoiled, not the places. So when we launched Oregon Things Look Different here, there was a lot of people and media stories criticizing it, saying it wasn't grammatical or it didn't say anything. And I still, 30 years later, see organizations and businesses, and there's even a radio station that uses some piece of Oregon Things Look Different here. And I think that's really a testament to how strong that statement was. It's hard not to be really emotional about the Seven Wonders campaign because certainly we saw every region in the state hugely impacted by the sheer beauty of the physical assets of Oregon. Mount Hood was left off the list. So was the Oregon coast. The Columbia River Gorge was somehow overlooked, as were the Painted Hills. Smith Rock and the Wallawas are both missing from it. All we can figure is whoever named the seven wonders of the world never set foot in Oregon. The fact that we have this 30-year relationship, we have this partnership, uh, we have this level of trust, and for me, whether it's your ad agency or the partners that you work with, um, trust breeds good work. And again, it goes back to because Dan cares. Uh, and that's what makes, you know, made me care because I didn't want to be the person who lost Oregon tourism account because I know he would fire me. This is where I grew up. This is where I learned about life. And this is where I've done the work I was destined to be. I have heard some things, whether it's true or not, and that is uh, that Dan Wyden has shared with the Wyden and Kennedy team that if they ever lose the Travel Oregon account, blood will spill and heads will roll. Oregon. Oregon. Okay, so frogs and fish. Frogs and fish is legendary Travel Oregon, Widening Kennedy collab work. University of Oregon was in the Rose Bowl, and so you got some free. We got some free advertising space, or we got some very heavily discounted advertising space. And you know, say if you give us a thirty-second commercial, uh, we'll run it. And uh, I think it was Glenn started started doing voices with the animals, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is nice. Oregon rivers are so clean. You know, my uncle in the rogue says the whole state's like this. No kidding. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna give this another shot. Ah! The marketing landscape has changed dramatically, but while that landscape has changed, I don't know that our storytelling has changed that much in the time that I've been here. You know, we, trail, we still try to tell authentic stories that we think are gonna resonate with our audience. 
uh, in, in a truthful, honest way. With all the clutter that you see in the tourism marketing world, we constantly need to look for ways to be innovative in terms of how we're showing off our beautiful state. What I think Oregon only slightly exaggerated does is it invites that visitor to rediscover their childhood sense of wonder, to find happiness, and to let that happiness bring them to Oregon. Especially with that Oregon Symphony soundtrack, I still get little goosebumps. I saw one comment was, I don't even know what this is, but I want to come to Oregon. I was like, I don't think it gets any better than that. <laughs> It's Oregon, with a very fantastical twist. A sense of whimsy and quirkiness and all those kinds of things have always made Oregon, Oregon. But it's done in a way that lets them find some happiness and joy again. And let that carry them to Oregon for their next great vacation destination.